Welcome to the Dental Marketing Guy Show. I'm Justin, the Dental Marketing Guy, and today we have a very special guest. Uh, if you hang out in Dental Town marketing forum sections, if you've l ever looked for a dentist who is also a top-notch web developer, uh, you've probably heard of Dr. David Wank. He is from ShortHillsDesign.com. And today we are talking about how you can increase your presence online and how you can get new patients through the internet, through your website, through SEO, through content creation, and kind of go through uh, David's opinions and uh, some ideas, some actionable tips for you on how you can increase your new patient flow. So first of all, uh, David, how are you? I am well, thank you. Thank you for having me and thank you for the invite. It's great to be here. Excellent, excellent. I know you've got a ton of really good technical knowledge, not just clinical, but with the online content creation, web development, and all that. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the history of uh, you as a dentist and then also Short Hills Design? Sure. Um, well, I went to dental school like the rest of us did, and um, I was always into business and marketing and small business, and I started out doing consulting to make some extra money on the side and then eventually I started building websites for anybody who would buy one didn't have to be dentist whatever it happened to be and then I realized I could put the two together and so a few years ago I basically had the company focus on just uh, dentists and physicians the majority of our clients are dentists we do have some physicians and some attorneys they are not attorneys who sue dentists thankfully um, and so that's, you know, where this began. And then it was in the beginning, obviously it was just me. And then as I got a little bit bigger and got some more clients and more responsibilities, I uh, built a team. And so now I work with my team and um, it's, it's fantastic because the team kind of enacts my vision. Not that I am, you know, um, everyone has a specific way that they do things. And I do, whether you're doing a website, you're doing SEO, whether or you're doing a root canal or a crown, the end of the day, we want the same output, the same success, but our road to get there is a little bit different. And so my team, kind of in the same way that my dental assistant knows that, you know, when I, I don't have to be in the room watching my assistant take an x-ray because she knows what I expect to see and it's not going to show me a film until it's the right film. She knows. The same way that my team knows my philosophy um, and knows what I think about things. And, um, you know, that's, that, that's great. So I'm, I'm happy to have that in place and, you know, my team has definitely taught me a lot as well. So that's, that's where we are. As far as dental school is concerned, I mean, you kind of glazed over this. Which, which school did you graduate from? Harvard. Harvard. Yeah. yeah. So not, not just any dental school. Well, you know, I talked my way in. <laughs> and, yeah. and you were, uh, you know, you've done other podcasts as well with Howard Ferran. Uh, what, what was your undergrad? Where was it? And what was it? Uh, in? Okay. So I have a degree in, uh, in English from Tufts focus in you know British literature so I can certainly write um, yeah and again and my dental background is from Harvard and I've always you know I've always liked running a business so I still see patients five days a week which I really enjoy doing and I think it keeps me fresh I don't like going to a lecture or a conference where someone who hasn't treated a patient in 20 years is telling me how I should work with patients now certainly that's valuable because they have more experience than I but I feel like that I need to be in the, um, I want to be in the trenches as it were. And that's part of what I do because I can speak patient and then I, and I speak dentist and so it bridges the gap. So I feel like my background, you know, especially with the team I put together, we offer a, a unique, really unique approach. I don't think there's any other team that I know of that, that does it the way we do it. And you know, I, I think it's great. And one of the one of the things that probably separates you is you know with your background in English and your background in dental and then as well as web development so this is this is really this is kind of singular I mean I, there's not a lot of people with that kind of knowledge so when it comes to dentists who are watching this who want to attract new patients what would you say, would you say content creation, writing is really important in getting ranked on search engines uh, and speaking to patients? And, and, and how do you go about that at Short Hills Design? About, well, I think the bottom line is that you've got to have a website to be competitive. 
that is it's just, you know, it's unfortunately it's a no brainer. It's no longer optional. Now the website has to be built to Google standards and that's not a secret. It, um, Google will tell you if you want to do it, Google will tell you how to, what needs to be done to make your website up to their standards. You can also look and see what needs to be done for a root canal up to standards on Google as well. And it's a question of what is my expertise? I, you know, I joke when I lecture that I haven't had a root canal fail in 10 years because I haven't done one in 10 years. Now I could certainly pick up the book tomorrow in the office and I can figure it out and do it. and It will take me the whole day. Um, my endodontist is a hell of a lot better job. She does it every day. So certainly I'm, I'm sending that to her. So it's not a secret, but obviously if, you know, if you want to play with your own website and you want to do that, have a great day. I, it's fun. Um, but not when it's your business on the line. So certainly there are certain things that in anything in life, you're not going to, most likely you're not going to write your own buy sell agreements when you buy and sell a practice. You can certainly Google that as well, but you know, it's a question of what you want to do on your own. But once that's there, content certainly is king, but the key with content is it has to be your voice. You know, obviously as, as you know, Justin, um, the days of where you build a website and we kind of get the content comes with it. That is no longer a good deal. In the past, you would pick the colors and the theme that you like, and then you pick, I want the you know, crown content from mile two and the root canal content. And that was great. The problem is, is Google has said that that's not good because it doesn't provide a unique user experience. You don't want to take your kids to the Apple farm and do a Google search for Apple farm. And then when you say about the Apple farm, that every Apple farm has the same page, the same about page. They're going to say, what's going on with these Apple farms? I can't tell them apart. Google stinks. I'm going to go look on a different search engine. So Google is about user experience. Now, the motivation behind that, that, you know, tap up for another day. But the bottom line is they want a good user experience. They have defined that as go ahead and provide custom content. And so we actually have all of our clients write custom content. Um, we certainly will write content for a fee, but I would much rather have the clients actually write their own content. I mean, I joke, uh, I will certainly come to your office and pour your models and polish them. Heck, fly me out there and pay me. I'll, I'll clean your floors. It's fine with me for my fee, no trouble. But if you're going to spend your marketing money and you're going to write content, I'd rather have you write it. Now for our clients, we tell them what to write, how to write it. We proofread it for them. We guide them through it, but you can't, you can't change the voice. That's something that you can't change. So I don't call it perio surgery. We call it gum work. And my staff knows we don't call it, you know, Dr. Wank is going to send you to the periodontist for gum surgery. Mm -mm. We're going to send you for gum work because your crown, your tooth needs this and this and this. Let the periodontist explain that they're going to get filleted. I just don't want to, it's not what I do and that's not how I control the message. So like any marketing, your website is controlling the message. And if you have someone else write your content for you, look, we're a great team. Um, Dr. Jen and I do a hell of a job with content. And I think that, you know, in the country, we're probably, I'd say we're, you know, one of the best teams in the country, Dr. Jennifer Garza and I in putting content together because we're both dentists. We can both write, we know what we're doing. And so, but even as good as we are, we cannot replicate your voice. We, we're a good second best, but only a good second best to you as, as the dentist who runs the practice. So that being said, you know, there are certain nuances. Um, you, you, we all have patients who call it an implant when it's really a post. And it's a question of what language do you use in your office? What tone of voice do you use in your office? Are you comical? Are you laughing all the time? Are you cracking jokes? I mean, I am, but my patients know that I'm funny and we have a good time, but when it's serious, the explanations that I give are serious explanations. But you know, the website has to match who you are, or at least you want to try that. And that's, that's difficult to do when anyone's writing your content for you, but when it's you, the point is, so it doesn't have to be super polished. It just has to be you. Now, certainly no typos and no, you know, no glaring grammatical errors, but it has to be you. If it's not you, there's a disconnect. And that's why, you know, just from a user interface perspective, content is huge, but from a, and from a search perspective, but from just getting your, your clients there, I mean, you're telling your patient, Hey, you know what? We talked about a bridge today. We talked about an implant today, go home, jump on the website. You can sit down with your spouse. You guys can look at it together. Basically what I said today in the chair is what you're going to find on the website. Now they go to the website and it says fix partial denture. 
a fixed partial denture. As dentists, we know that's a bridge, but no patient is going to know after you said implant or a bridge are your options, you know, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith goes home with Mrs. Smith and they look and they see fixed partial denture. What denture? Now there's a disconnect. So that's why, that's why content is just key for, for selling things and for explaining to your patients. But again, as far as Google is concerned, if you don't have custom content, you're at a significant disadvantage. Right, right. And so that's a really good point because you're talking about writing for your audience. Absolutely. And, you know, yeah. So you, you know, at Short Hills Design, you know how to talk to dentists, but then you don't apply that same vernacular to your clients' websites or you don't encourage them to do the same, right? Well, no, I think that they, it's, it's up to the dentist. I have certain clients who want to tell you, here are the steps, step by step in doing a root canal. You know, even when you, like today, we're working with a patient with a denture. And I said, a denture has five steps. And then next to today, we did the bite and we picked the teeth. Next time, we're going to try it in with the teeth. Time after that, it's yours to take home. That's how I would say it. Another dentist might say, today, we completed your occlusal records and we set up your occlusal scheme and we made sure that your bite was accurate and we took a mold to make sure that we can replicate your bite for the laboratory. Next time I see you, we're gonna try it in, which would be a mostly functional piece that will be in wax. Um, the teeth will be in it so you can evaluate how the bite looks and I can evaluate if, if you're gonna be biting okay. And then once we approve of that together, the time after that, you'll be able to wear them home from the office with the post-op instructions. So I just said the same thing, so it depends. So you're not gonna to expect to see if I'm telling you what I told you first, my website should parallel that. You know, here are the five steps for a denture. But if I'm the type of dentist who wants to explain that, well, the wax we use melts at X degrees Celsius, and this is what it is, some of us like to do that. Um, you know, some of us don't, but it's your style. The point is that your style should match what it shows. But you've got to remember, though, on the web, as we all know, we skim. You know, we kind of want to put out a ton of content, and there's a video that I made about how to write an article for, for SEO purposes. Now, all it does is we take a three paragraph article and in fact, it's written in gibberish. It's not even written in, you know, you can't read it. It's kind of like when we show you a mock-up without, with, with um, you know, the Latin words in it. It's because we want you focusing on the big picture. But if you have a three paragraph article, it's kind of boring. If you add a title, it's much better. If you add subtitles, now it's A, easier for the eyes to skim and read, B, you've got more content for Google to pick up, and that's kind of more what you want. You want users to skim. If you have an article about veneers, you might say, these are veneers. Paragraph one is, uh, you know, veneers are an excellent in-between between composites and crowns. The next one is, veneers are durable, and they are, um, veneers, veneers are strong and durable. That paragraph's about that, third paragraph. Uh, you can talk about the cost of veneers. You know, veneers are, and the aesthetics whatever, you know, the aesthetics, veneers are aesthetically beautiful, blah, 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 blah. So now when you've got someone looking at that page, if they're concerned about the aesthetics, they can skim down to aesthetics. If they're concerned about cost, find the headline for the cost. So, you know, when you're reading an article on Wikipedia, most of the times you're not going to read it start to finish. You'll probably jump around to the topic that you want. And you want right. to give your users that. And by actually providing a better interface for your users, making it readable, you're actually making it readable for Google as well. But remember, Google doesn't care what the page looks like. Google doesn't see web pages like we see them. Google sees them as a block of text. So, you know, the aesthetics of websites are done for us, for people. But the um, kind of like your car. You could certainly take a car that has no paint, that's just an engine and a chassis, and, you know, you could probably just drive that around, really, um, probably. But certainly we put doors and paint and things on a car to make it more aesthetically pleasing. That's kind of the concept. Yeah, and you know, obviously the usage metrics are really important. I know you're big on analytics. I know that it's important to you to constantly look for ways to improve a website. Oh, you know, if the if the big orange button doesn't work with this website, try something else. Uh, so so that's all part of being aesthetically pleasing indirectly. Um, so you actually you approach the, when you, so your clients, so you coach them with 
advice on how to write their own content in, in their personality, their way of talking. And that makes perfect sense because, like you said, I mean, if I'm sitting in the chair and it's it's occlusion, 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 and I go to the the website and it's bite, 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 it's like, wait a second, I'm confused. This wasn't these weren't the words that he was using. Exactly. And with anything, you know, if you go to a financial planner and they're talking words to you and they go check out their website and they're talking about you know, ETFs versus whatever and, and, and loads on funds. And wait, wait, no one told me anything about loads on mutual funds. You know, so it's about a continuous experience. So you're absolutely right. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's about putting it together so that the patients have the same experience, well, online, in terms of that same feeling. I hate seeing the warm, fuzzy feeling. But the same reason, why do we bother putting pictures of the staff online? Why? Because you want to know that if you visit the dentist first, and you certainly visit the website first, I meant to say, that you look at these people, and when you go to the office, you recognize them. Now, that's subtle. That's the kind of thing where it's not necessary, but it's kind of nice that if you see, you know, whoever, you know, Jim is the front desk person, and you go and Jim is there, you're kind of like, all right. You know, it's just a little bit of taking that anxiety down because you've seen them. Um, and that's, look. All of this marketing is by it's it's based on convention and what as humans we see as convention. So, if you pull out of your driveway tomorrow morning and go to the stop sign, it's the same color, the same shape, but it's green. You're going to stop. You know, if you pull out if you're if you're at a traffic light, and instead of being red, yellow, and green, it's now green, yellow, red, and all of a sudden the bottom lights up and it's red. Do you stop or do you go? That's confusing. Right. It's so. I don't, you know, when, when it comes to traffic lights, they don't want to make you think. There's a famous web book called Don't Make Me Think. It's about interface design. And so, but the point is, is that we go by convention. And so why do we, I was once heckled at a lecture. I was giving a lecture about social media and someone asked, well, how many dentists have a Facebook page? You know, does it matter? You know, it doesn't matter. It's ridiculous. You don't have numbers. And I said, it does matter because it's one of the other little things that puts it together with trust. Um, People cannot come into my office and evaluate my bite wings. I won't show anybody bite wings from my crowns, by the way. Um, but seriously, they, and even if I showed them my bite wings, they can't read them. So they have to use some other method to evaluate me. Same thing with your, with your attorney, with your accountant, with your, you know, your divorce lawyer, your whatever it happens to be, your real estate broker. You're not going to know until after you get a $3,000 bill from the IRS that your accountant wasn't good. Or whatever it happens to be. Right, right. You have to do other things to establish trust. And that's that's part of what you've got to look, you do it in your office. How come you wear a white coat? People trust that. If you wore blue, if you wore bright orange coats tomorrow, people are gonna stop. You're gonna say, hey, listen, we got the orange coats because when we have the dental light in the operatory, the orange does this with the wavelength and reflectiveness and it lets us do better dentistry. So it's so much better. And the patients are going to be like, well, because they don't expect it. And so they've been trained, good or bad, that in order for you to be a good dentist, you must have a Facebook page. Now, that's absurd. Clearly, there's no correlation. But obviously, since they can't look at your x-rays, they don't know if you over-prepare teeth. They don't know if your lab loves you, if your lab hates you. Facebook page, you know, Google Plus page, a couple of YouTube videos. You're smiling. Everyone seems happy. The website's clean. Therefore, you must be a good dentist. I mean, that's how do you evaluate, you know, for those of you who are expecting children, how do you evaluate your obstetrician? Are you going to go in the OR with them and watch them deliver babies and say, okay, you know, timing, start. I mean, what, what are you going to do? You've got to go by what their office looks like, what their, how do they talk to you? Do they answer your questions? Do they listen to you? Um, the fact that you have to wait an hour every time you see them because their office is packed, that's bad, but it's good because their office is packed, that group think because there must be something good about them. So you've got to take every advantage when you market indirectly by reinforcing trust. That's, you know, you go to a restaurant and you sit down at the table and the silverware is dirty, you know, they might have the best steak in the country, but if the silverware is dirty, you're not going to trust their steak because you're okay. using secondary things because you can't evaluate the steak you haven't eaten yet. Right, so that's right. One. That's why we have to do these things, not because we want to. It's a pain in the neck as far as I'm concerned. One yeah. of my favorite lectures is social media for dentists who hate social media. I give them one all the time. And again, it's just, a, you know, 
you, you, there are certain things you have to do as a dentist. And unfortunately, you've got to be an HR manager, you've got to be a purchasing manager, you've got to be accounts receivables manager, and now you've got to be a marketer. And so in the same way that you're going to certainly have an accountant, I hope, to help you with your dental finances, unless you have a background in accounting, and you're going to have you know, an HR person help you, ADP or whoever's going to do your payroll, unless you do it yourself, you know, unfortunately now we're in a time where marketing is another hat you have to wear. It's another distraction from what we do all day and enjoy just relaxing, the relaxing business of dentistry. You know, you know you're in trouble when, when doing the dentistry becomes relaxing. From all the other business things you have to do for the office. So you are, you know, dentistry is a fifth of what you do now, kind of, you know, in that regard, because you're managing everything else. And so unfortunately or fortunately, we're now in a time where you have to wear a marketer's hat. Yeah, and you know, that makes, that's, I think that's why, you know, we had uh, Dr. Dan Marut on the show from QDP, and he has this slogan that I've been using ever since I heard him say it, do what you do best and delegate the rest. Absolutely. And, and so when you talk about, you know, uh, what, I mean, why in the world as a dentist, why would you do web development unless it's like you, you enjoy it, you've got a company, you do it, you've got a whole infrastructure set up for it, uh, why in the world would you as a dentist try and learn web development, try and learn SEO, you know? I mean, the content makes sense. I, I see your philosophy on that. That makes sense. Because that's a personality thing. It's just like you're not going to delegate the task of, uh, you're going to delegate the task of a photographer, but you're not going to take photographs of someone else. Right. You know? So, so you know, it, it makes perfect sense. I mean, just do what you need to do, which is dentistry and talking in front of the camera if you're doing video. Uh, right. But but even then, you know, you can delegate that out. Like like for instance, with patient testimonials on an iPhone, I'm always saying that's great social proof. You can yep. examine the veracity of the statements being yep. made, and you know, as a patient, that's all you have is is who did you know? Here's here, here's Billy Bob. Yep. He looks like me, talks like me, acts like right. me, and he likes the doctor. Yep. yep. Doctor. Absolutely. Frank. And yep. well, you know, in terms of understanding it, there's a certain level of understanding. Um, it's funny you bring up because I wrote a book on this. And the point is, is that, you know, when it comes to the example I give is a few years ago, we had to redo our driveway. And all that we cared about at the time was to make sure that when they redid the driveway, that they didn't damage the rocks on the side and that the water didn't pool. It didn't matter to me what kind of cement they used, what the particle size was, how... You know, my kids wanted to know what kind of gasoline goes in the, um, you know, in the cement thing and the steamroller. I, I, but, but as someone who wanted an end product, all I wanted to know, I had to know that, I had to understand what does a good driveway look like? What are the characteristics of a good driveway? How the company gets there, I don't care. What are the characteristics of a good bowl of soup? I don't care how they make the soup in the back, as long as it's delicious. And so the book I wrote was designed to say, listen, nobody ever taught us about web design and SEO, and social media, and conversion optimization. So the book, the Web Design Workbook for Dentists, it's now online, is designed to say, hey, listen, you know what? Here's, some, here's a review from 10,000 feet of what you need to know of questions that you can ask of the people who are soliciting you. You go to any of the shows, Doc, do you have a website? Doc, you need this? Doc, you can't answer those questions. I mean, I didn't know what questions to ask about a driveway. I had to look it up to see what should a driveway look like you know, when it's done. I don't, I don't know what to ask him. So same thing, you know, we had the house painted ways, but I, I don't know what you're supposed to look for. You know, the shutters shouldn't stick together. Okay, but that's obvious. So what the book does is it speaks in English. So the dentist can read it or the staff can read it. I wrote it in kind of dental staff language. But the idea is that as the dentist, delegate that. You know, there's a lot of, when we build a website for someone, we have something like a 172 point checklist when we build a website. Um, look, we build websites like we do composites. You know, I don't, don't do composites at home. But certainly, you know, <laughs> I, time, I time, you know, my, my bonding agents. I time my materials. I follow the instructions because that's what you need to get success when you're working with dental materials. And on a website, it's not just build a site and put it up there. But for me, the best clients are the ones who kind of understand. Certainly, my clients have said, David, do we have to buy your book? No, you have us. You don't need the book. But certainly, having the book or reading the book will give you that background so you know what to ask so you're not saying well you know should i get a wordpress website or should i get 
Drupal. What's Drupal? Should I get, and you don't need to know that, folks, by the way, but that, that's the idea. Should I pay for hosting or should I not pay for hosting? What, are the, what, what, what information do I need in one paragraph to help me make that choice? Because I don't know. What do I know about that? So it's kind of that's why you need an advisor at some point, and the book serves as an advisor to kind of, and, and it's company agnostic. So whether you go with me or whoever you go with, it is a, um, it's kind of like taking the car to Costco for tires. Costco is model agnostic. They don't care what you come in with as long as, you know, they carry a tire that works for you. You know, the bolts they use are going to work on any car, so to speak. And the book is designed to work on any car. So at least you have the information that you need to go forward. And what's cool about the book now, I do it as a subscription, as a yearly subscription. So as new things come up, I update the book. So you always have the most updated information. So as, as more things come out and I write more, you've got the update. So it just, it's an easier, and you can, it's designed for your iPhone, your iPad, whatever. Read it online, and it's great. And there's a free, um, you head over there, webdesignworkbook.com. The introduction is free, so you can actually see how the site gets laid out. But that's an aside. But yeah, I don't want you to have to understand PHP or how to represent variables and things like that when you code. If you want to do it, enjoy it. God bless. I'd rather listen to history. That's what I listen to in the car. But certainly do it if you like it, but I'm not doing my own driveway. Look, I'm not waxing my own RPDs either. I know how to evaluate an RPD so the framework sits. I know what it's supposed to look like. I honestly don't remember what the exact percentage of the metal in the RPDs are. I mean, I have the sticker that the lab gives me, and I don't remember the fusing temperatures and this and that. But that's not relevant for what I'm doing clinically every day. And that's kind of the point. So, yeah. I know that was a yeah. segue. Sorry about that taking a little time there. But, yeah. No, 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 no. This is good information because here's the thing is ultimately it comes down to trust. Once you know who you can trust, a lot of things in life are not rocket science, but knowing who to believe is what makes it rocket science. Sure. So a book like this, webdesignworkbook.com, right? The web design workbook for dentists. Yep. At oh. web, yeah, at webdesignworkbook.com. I mean, it's yeah. www.webdesignworkbook.com. It's called The Web Design Workbook for Dentists. Excellent, excellent. And it would so, have been a domain name was. What's that? It would have been too long a domain name, <laughs> which is in chapter one of the book about domain names. You know, ah, don't make it this long. Very good. Put it on a card. Very good, very yeah. good. Um, <laughs> you can wrap um, it. And it, look, um, right, no, I mean, that, that's an issue too. Because think about like if you're going to have a domain name, Orthodontist for Kids, K I D Z. I mean, I'd say don't do that only because people are not going to expect it to end in a Z. You know, they're going to want to end an S and they're probably going to guess a Z, an S. Or make, don't make it a dot US or dot biz. Because even if you tell them, you know, we're doctor's office dot, dot biz, they're going to type dot com anyway. Even right. though you told them it's dot biz, you know, they're still going to write dot com. So there's certain things, little subtle things like that, the book will show you. But any anyway, developer you work with should know that. Yeah, I mean, really good tips. I mean, that's the thing is you're a dentist. You know how to write. Uh, you know, you've, you've been in the trenches, like you said. You are in the trenches. Every uh, day. Yeah, every day. Five days a week, huh? Five days a week. You, oh. Do you sleep? Sometimes. <laughs> After this. After this. this. Yeah. He's exhausted, folks. He's been up for six days. Right. <laughs> Rubbing the eyes. No, no, no. No, no. But I, yeah, I think I think this is really good information. There's not enough people out there who have dental skill, who have writing skill, who have web development skill, who who are doing this for dentists. I think this is really, really a great resource for our listeners. So if Thank you me. want to check that out, it's webdesignworkbook.com. And yeah, maybe maybe just if there's a few quick tips, maybe three quick tips of if we take away anything from this interview, you've given us a wealth of knowledge, a lot to think about, uh, some action to take with webdesignworkbook.com. Uh, but if there's three quick tips that our listeners can take, uh, what, what are those, one. David? Tip number one, make sure that you have a separate page for every service that you do. It's critical. You can have a page that says, I'm Dr. Wank, and we do veneers, crowns, dentures, root canals, implants. You can't, have, you can't have that. You've got to have an implant page, a dentures page, a veneers page. That's number one. Number two, verify your Google Plus profile. Um, we don't want to get into why, but at the end of the day, you've got a Google Maps listing for your office that hopefully you verified 
Google My Business, and they're going to give you a profile. And you want to fill it out 100%. And 94% does not equal 100%. It's not one of those where it's close enough. You got to fill it out 100% because that may or may not affect rankings. In a, in a case where there's no competition, it might not make a difference. But when there's competition, it could make a difference. And it's free, and your competitors are doing it. So, and I hate to say Google said so, but you've got to do that. And number three, write your own content. Or pay someone to write it for you who knows what they're doing. I'd much rather you have a 10-page website with your own content than a 50-page website that's duplicate content, because duplicate content has been known to be penalized. Um, when I lecture, I say, is the content, I show a picture of, of MetLife Stadium, and I say, you know, was it 70,000 people? Is the content written for you, or you and 70,000 of your closest friends? And that's, you know, th those would be the three tips. Excellent, excellent. So you got to verify that Google listing, folks. Got to. Sure you're but verify the page. Don't just verify the listing, but fill out the profile 100%. Absolutely. And yeah. they make that really easy. I mean, it, it shows you your progress. Yep. This is, yeah. Yeah. One of those things that you kind of have to do. It's kind of like giving topical. You just have to do it. Um, you know, just because it's convention. You certainly can get them done without topical. I don't I think it's bad for business, but certainly, you know, it's another kind of little thing that makes everything a little better. You know, does that make your crown come out better or not? Not really. But giving topical is an adjunct that can only make things help. And so filling out that Google Plus page is the same thing. Um, you know, you might not get a super bonus if you do it, but you certainly could lose a little bit if you don't. That's that's the idea. Maybe right. Right. Yeah, so you got you gotta have that. And unique pages, unique pages for your domain.com forward slash Invisalign or forward slash implants or forward exactly. slash exactly whatever it may be, whatever you offer. Yep. And I think that kind of goes back to the idea of satisfying user intent. If you, here's, here's what you see, and I'll, I'm going to go off on a short little rant here, is a lot of dentists, uh, they, they stuff the keywords in the title tag. That's where you click on Google yeah. get to your website. And they go, dentist, city name, implants, Invisalign, blah, 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 all these services. And the, and the title tag's umpteen degrees too long. And here you are, you're thinking like, really? Is that what you want to see? You want to see a stock photo of a, right. that same, same family right. in the park because you're looking for Invisalign? Right. Like, here's the point is you go yourdomainname.com and your website has to be coded by an expert like, like David. And, you know, you got to have someone who knows SEO. And then, and then you do the forward slash, and then you give them the page that actually satisfies that intent. Yeah. I mean, what do people want to see? They want to see a video of someone talking about Invisalign, or they at least want to see pictures of before and after, and they want to see copy that's easy to follow, that they can scan, bullet point. Yep. Yep. They want to see the doctor who's doing it. Yep. It makes perfect sense, you know? But here's what everyone does is they try to get their homepage ranked for every keyword known to man, and they wonder why it doesn't rank right. for every keyword, right. because it's not designed for that. Is that what you want to yeah. see? Yeah, it's like the supermarket. You know, you can't stuff everything in one aisle. Every aisle cannot be about produce. You know, you certainly can have a supermarket that has one aisle with everything stuffed into it, but it makes a lot more sense. It's a lot easier to get to when, you know, the food has different groups. Um, That's you know, right. It's, That's right. Yeah, it's, it's perfect. I, I like your analogies. I like... Matt, you do dental, you do you do auto, you do groceries. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it all. Right, that's right. Yeah. But I mean, it makes perfect sense because not only does this make perfect sense to dentists who are really smart, um, but but maybe there's just so much inundation. You're not trained to do that. The decisions. Look, when you know any of the decisions that I made today, whether about how far to cut a tooth, or to save a tooth, or to take a tooth out, those are far more complicated decisions than any decision you'll make regarding your website. The problem is we're trained to make those decisions. We've made those decisions a thousand times and I have extensive training as my colleagues do on how to determine if a tooth is good or not. We do it all the time. And so certainly I think that's much more difficult than building a website, but you just don't do it. It's also, you know, um, there's a problem with my car. I don't know what I'm looking at. It's easy for the person who knows how to do it. I could look it up in the book too. I don't know what I'm doing. So I have someone else who knows what they're doing, do it. So I'd rather spend my time with my kids than learning how to do everything in my house that has to get done. 
Absolutely. And so you go into all this on webdesignworkbook.com. Yep. Guys, check that out. At least give it a look and see if it looks like it's a good fit for you. Uh, thank you so much, oh, David. Dr. Wank, you are, man, I, I tell you what, you are doing great things for Dennis. I like your style, David, because not only do you uh, attack the market from a technical standpoint with the web development and the proper coding and understanding that you got to have a website that's up to, up to snuff. You got to have it up to the Google Webmaster Guidelines. Right. I mean, that yeah. is basic stuff. But then you take it a step further and you, you understand the psychology of the patient. Sure. Guys, your prospective patients want to see you. I'm talking homepage. I'm talking about us page. I'm talking photographs. I'm talking video. Now, maybe you don't want to do those things, but here's what is working. Your competitors are doing it, and if they're not, this is an opportunity for you to get Absolutely. ahead. Either get ahead or stay competitive. If you don't have digital x-rays anymore, you could argue, I mean, if you, don't have, if you still have wet films, your competitors have digital. You know, I like reading wet films better, but if everyone has digital, I hate to say that you have to have it too, but it's becoming what people expect, so exactly. Yeah, perfect. Well, uh, just really quickly, we've got webdesignworkbook.com, uh, but where else can the, the viewers find you? Uh, Shorthillsdesign.com is our website. Um, all our social sites are on there. Um, we're all over, I'm all over Dentaltown. Um, so ask away. And your username is, what, is it Short Hills Design? Yeah, I think it's Short Hills on Dentaltown, yeah. Short Just Hill. you get the marketing categories and you'll find me pretty easily. Excellent. All right? All right, yeah, thank you, Dr. Wink. Thank uh, you so much. I really appreciate you having me. Absolutely. It's Thanks. been a huge honor. Uh, guys, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, feel free to reach out to David. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. If you've got any questions that we didn't address that you might – uh, you might have. Well, it sounds like webdesignworkbook.com might answer all those. But certainly, questions. they can post it on the comments for this hangout. Yeah, uh, you know, we can definitely take a look at that together and answer any questions that, that people have. Absolutely. Oh, you know, it, it's great to see a dentist help another dentist. Man, I, I love having. De that's why I love having dentists on the show because uh, you understand what it's like. You're in the trenches. It's great. It's great. I love it. So, uh, thank you. It's it's been a real honor, David. Thanks again for the invite. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And uh, thank you for watching the Dental Marketing Guy show.